You ever learn a guitar lick or a guitar riff and wonder why it works? Wonder why the notes sound good? Maybe something like this. I'm going to tell you how you can think about that. I'm going to show you how we can analyze songs and we can understand what's happening within them and you know how we can apply that to our own playing. So let's take this, this riff, Beast of Burden, Rolling Stones, and what we want to do is we want to understand what the underlying chord progression is. What the structure of the chords are that the riff is kind of playing with or around or over, on top of, through. If we see that, then we can maybe piece together why it works and what's going on. So let's take a look at these shapes. So here's the first one. No, nope, here it is. So what this is, is actually a three string chunk, a triad out of an E shape or a six string bar chord. So if you don't know the cage system, I have a playlist on that, but basically you can take this E chord and bar it and move it all the way up take a piece of it. So does that make this E? It doesn't really sound the same. It's not the same chord. When you move it up the fret, it takes on a different note name. So E becomes F, becomes F sharp, becomes G, becomes G sharp, A, A sharp, B. So the first chord in Beast of Burden is a B chord. And it sounds like B triad, or if you know a B7, it sounds kind of like that. It's B. So let's go to the next one. What's that? So here we have a ring finger kind of bar on the ninth fret. Strings 4, 3, and 2. What's that? Is that, is that another chord? Yes, it is. It's another caged shape. It's another triad shape moved up from the open chords. This one is the open A chord. That becomes a B flat, and a B, and a C, and a D flat, and a D, and an E flat, and an E. So this really, this shape, those three strings, is an E chord. So we have B, E, which sounds a whole lot like B, E. Or, you know, if you only know open B7, B, Although this isn't a B7 chord. B E. Let's keep going. What's that? Well, that is actually very close to our B chord, but we have one note that's different. This middle finger comes off and the first finger bars so that this note goes down a fret. Then, of course, we move it up this position where it's actually played. So this is our shape. So that is also out of an E minor shape, an E shape. I just gave it away. It's out of an E shape, but the difference is it's an E minor shape. So maybe you didn't know you can do caged, you can do that movable voicing bar chord idea with minor chords too. So this chord, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp. This is a C sharp chord, a C sharp minor chord, a C sharp minor triad, played with the E minor caged shape. So right now we have B to E to C sharp minor. And then if you, you know, if you move that down to where you might know those chords, B, E, C sharp minor. That kind of sounds like the same thing, but different. Kind of cooler, kind of more melodic up here, more memorable. Let's keep going. Let's go to the last one. 
So we have this little hammer on thing, but fundamentally the chord we're playing is this one. So what is that? You guessed it, it's another triad. It's another caged shape that's been moved up. This one is from the C shape. It's the middle, or strings four, three, two, of a C shape. We move that up. but it becomes an A chord because the root of that C shape is now on an A note. And then we just take strings 4, 3, 2 to get a slightly more playable, I would say even better sounding voicing. It's cool that it's only one note away from our C sharp minor. So it's kind of a very melodic change there, that nice shift. So the whole thing is really B to E, B to C sharp minor, to A. So if we played that down here, maybe where you know that stuff. say not quite as interesting. I, I think the Beast of Bird and the way that it's laid out on the fretboard is really special and really cool. Um, but it's just different. It's moved down and it's played with different voicings. So why learn all the cage shapes? Why go through that process? Well, you can do something called voice leading. So between this B and this E chord, we actually have notes that are only moving by a fret or two. Um, this note stays the same between the two chords. This note moves one fret up, and this note moves two frets up. So you get this sort of... that kind of melody in your head. Within the guitar lick, you can, you can hear it, you can remember it, it's very memorable. You can sing along to it, you can play it. So that's what I think, what I think is the beauty of the, the caged approach to chord playing, is you get that voice leading action. But what we're really talking about today is just the fact that this riff isn't like a bunch of random notes that have no relationship to each other. It's not just dots on the fretboard, it's not just fingers on numbers on strings on frets. It's chords. It's chords that, you know, work together. So let's talk about that, the last piece we're going to do. Why do these chords work, work together? Why, why do they fit together? Well, these chords are all from the key of E. They are the 1, 4, 5, and 6 of the key of E. E is the 1, A is the 4, B is the 5, C sharp minor is the 6. Now they don't come in that order in the song, but they're still from that same key signature. 5, 1, 5, 6, 4. So why is that important? Well, two reasons. One, just to know that, like, those chords fit together. So if you are ever playing in the key of E, these type of things might work for you because they're from the same key signature. They all kind of go together. They're, they're related. We won't get into that too much, but they, they kind of work together. They kind of go together. And then the second piece is, these represent chords that go together not only in the key of E, but in another key, if we move them appropriately around the neck. Let me explain. If we think of those chords not as E and B and A and C sharp minor, as, as letters, but as numbers, then the relationship between the shapes can be used to play other chord changes that have the same number relationship. Okay, let's make that really simple. If B to E could be thought of as a number, what would it be? Well, if E is the center of the key, then B would be the five. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B. Five to one. 
if you move these two shapes to another location on the guitar, it's still a five to one, but you play two different chords. What am I playing right here? Well, this is now playing a C chord. Which means this is the five of C, which happens to be a G. So if you're ever playing in the key of C, and you want to get the four most common chords right under your fingers, guess what? Five, one, six, four. Key of C. Playing in the key of D, move that so that it's a D chord, which would be here. Now you got one, five, six, four. It's so cool. If you understand that relationship, if you go the step further between uh, past chord names and notes and fingers and strings, and you understand that it's a one, five, six, four, or whatever the progression is, then you can move it around. And you can play those chords in a different key, in a new context, in your own song, in another jam, in another cover song, and start to, start to be able to play licks like you want to play, riffs like you want to play on the guitar, play rhythm wherever you want on the neck, and understand how it all fits together. If you want to know more about these caged ideas and triad shapes, I have a caged series playlist you can check out. It's a whole series of videos taken through the cage system. But for now, just think about that. That Rolling Stones riff, that Beast of Burden riff, is, it's not a bunch of unrelated things. They actually, they can be thought of as having some sort of pattern, some sort of relationship between one another. And if we understand that, then it can open up the rest of the neck for us. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, please. Leave a comment if there's anything you want to see on the channel, and I will try to bring it to you. Thanks for watching.